what a year, huh? I mean, we experienced so many challenges, but we also experienced a lot of triumphs. You all were community warriors. You weren't just lifting up your local businesses, but you were lifting up your entire communities. Now, after having experienced this past year and a half, I have a prediction. That prediction is that we're going to experience a chamber boom. Thanks to all of your incredible work through the pandemic and economic recovery, we're well positioned for a chamber renaissance and to get the exposure and the recognition that you've all earned. It's our time to shine. Now I'll come back to this idea of a chamber boom, but I wanted to give you a little bit of context. Now over the past year and a half, we've shared hundreds of examples of chambers doing incredible work. One of the primary vehicles we've used to do this is our blog. In fact, during the height of the pandemic, we had more than 51,000 views of that blog. We updated it every week with the latest and greatest from Chambers. We're still using this blog as a tool to share some of the best and brightest work that's being done in our industry. So if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. Now, even through the greatest crises, Chambers were doing heroic things. One of the best wins that we had in the past year was getting PPP access for Chambers of Commerce and 501c6 organizations. We had many partners in this effort, and we're so grateful for their work. But at ACCE, we had a grassroots campaign, hashtag Chamber Strong. This was a great opportunity to highlight all of the things that you were doing in your community. We had more than 6,000 posts and more than 7 million impressions across social media. But it did something else. It didn't just talk about the work Chambers were doing, but it also elevated the brand and the profile of Chambers of Commerce. At ACCE, this is something we strive to do, to be a megaphone for your stories. Now, from the pandemic all the way through to economic recovery, Chambers have led the way. ACCE has just put out its economic recovery report. This is a benchmarking study that looks at the impacts that COVID has had on Chambers of Commerce, some of the trends that we've seen, and adaptations. How have Chambers changed the way they're working to be more successful? One of the more interesting data points from this survey is between 2019 and 2020, 76% of chambers saw a decrease in their annual revenue. So even at the height of a crisis, we had fewer financial resources to work with. Staff was impacted just as well. In this survey, 65% of chambers said that they had some level of decrease of their staffing. Only 35% said they didn't. And the staff decreases took all kinds of forms, whether it was adjusting contracts, reducing hours, not filling open positions, temporary furloughs or permanent layoffs. So we had very few resources to work with. But something really interesting happened. With fewer resources in the height of the pandemic, we got incredibly laser focused. We were focused on the most critical issues for our businesses and the most critical issues for our community. We didn't have time to get involved in fringe projects or fringe programs. We had to focus on the most important things. And what we're realizing is that that focus is going to be even more critical to our future. Now, at last year's summit, we unveiled our latest research. These are the three pillars that are essential for chamber success. What's interesting is that these pillars really speak to that need for focus. Now, as a recap, the first pillar is that your chamber mission has to be all about community impact. Whether you're working on workforce and talent, inclusive economic development, education, it's about solving your community's greatest challenges and focusing on your community's success. The second pillar is all about courageous leadership around that mission. And leadership can take many forms. You might be the convener, the consensus builder, or the catalytic leader. One thing that came out of our research is that you have to have strong partnerships in order to be successful. Then the third pillar is business model alignment. Your business model has to align to your mission. It's all about chasing the mission and not chasing the money. So we have to reimagine our membership models and we have to focus on non-dues revenue, whether it's 501c3 foundation work, fee for service, creative sponsorships, we have to get imaginative about how we're funding our efforts. So we've been tracking chambers who've embraced these principles and what we've seen is that they're experiencing a lot of success. In fact, they're moving away from focusing on financial stability and they're focusing more on financial sustainability and having even more impact in their communities. Now we mentioned this last year as well, but the size of the chamber has absolutely no bearing on how impactful you're going to be in your community. 
So I'm gonna share with you all new examples of chambers who are experiencing courageous leadership and lots of success. You'll see small local chambers, large metro chambers, state chambers, chambers of all sizes can find real true success with these efforts. This is a great example. So this is the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. They've just launched their Small Business Economic Incentive Grant Program. So they're delivering grants to some of the sectors that have been most impacted by COVID. They actually started out with $2.5 million from their county, and they can deliver this to local small businesses. But when the city heard about this, they kicked in another $2 million in ARP funds. So now the chamber is focused on helping those who are most in need, but they also get a small administrative overhead compensation for being the organization that's delivering these grants. Now we've seen lots and lots of chamber work and courageous leadership around diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Many chambers, like the Coral Springs Coconut Creek Chamber, have hosted DEI summits and brought together stakeholders from our communities to figure out what's working and what's not working. Now, another example that I'm a really big fan of is from the Greater Boston Chamber. So like so many of us, they have leadership development programs and they're offering certificates. But two of those certificates look at this DEI aspect. They have a transformational DEI certificate and an inclusive managers certificate. So again, taking leadership development and putting a DEI lens on it. Glendale, Arizona, this is an exceptional example of courageous leadership. They took the lead and took charge to adopt a non-discrimination ordinance in their city to protect the LGBTQ community. They realized it was going to be a competitive advantage for them with their workforce to make sure that that segment was protected. Now they worked with lots of other partners, but they were the ones who courageously led on this issue. Now, if you look at something like entrepreneurship, I'm a big fan of the Launch McAllen example. They look at the entire entrepreneurship ecosystem and they try to offer programs and resources to touch on every aspect of that journey. Whether it's trying to figure out a good pitch for your business, if it's figuring out crowdfunding or finding a mentor, they look at the entire journey and try to offer services so that the entrepreneurial ecosystem in their community is as strong as it can be. Here's another good workforce and talent example. The Asheville Area Chamber of Commerce, they partnered with their Economic Development Coalition and they launched an inclusive hiring program. So this includes mentorship, skills and training, but also places those trained employees with open positions. So they're addressing a workforce challenge, but they're doing it with an inclusive lens. Our friends up in Calgary, they realized that a cornerstone for economic recovery in their region was inclusive economic growth. So they've built their plan around that idea. They're working to build more equitable employment opportunities, and they're supporting policy that supports inclusive development. I've mentioned quite a few times that this idea of healthy communities as part of the mission of a Chamber of Commerce is something that I think can be really successful. This is a great example from Lodi. So the Lodi Chamber partnered with their local hospital and they created resources for something called Healthy Lodi Initiative. They've got programs and resources for healthy workplaces and healthy families. What's great about this idea of healthy communities is you can define health any way that you see fit. Obviously, health is a huge issue for our workforce, but it's also an issue for organizations that are looking to invest in our markets. They look at things like the health of the community when they make their investment decisions. This example actually takes this idea of health maybe one step further. So this is the Metro Chamber of Sacramento. Now, like so many of us, they were getting calls from their members during the pandemic asking some of the basic questions. How do I get PPE? How do I access funds that can support small businesses? But they were also getting calls with a much more human touch. People who were in a dark place, who were having mental challenges, some who were even suicidal. So they realized pretty quickly that they needed help in addressing these challenges. So they brought in mental health experts who trained their staff on how to handle these calls and what resources are available to these individuals. They actually realized that mental health was a thread that cut through how they're going to be able to engage with their community and they got their staff prepared to handle it. So we talked about partnerships and that the value of partnerships is even more important now than it was before. But what I've been really excited to see are these non-traditional partnerships that are taking shape throughout the chamber community. This is an interesting example from the Naples Chamber. 
So they have a youth leaders group and they partnered with the local community foundation. And that community foundation gave the youth leaders $10,000 in grants that they could give out to local organizations and nonprofits. So the young leaders sat down and tried to figure out what are the biggest challenges facing our community and which organizations are working to address those. And that's what they used to determine who got the funding. So a really interesting partnership between the chamber and the community foundation. I'm a big fan of this example too. This is from the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce and they partnered with Spaceworks Tacoma. So during the pandemic, a lot of their local businesses were completely boarded up. It wasn't very appealing when you went into downtown to see the boarded up shops. So they created this idea of rapid murals. They put up beautiful murals all across those boarded up shops and something incredible happened. They created these Instagrammable moments. So what had been an eyesore was now something people were flocking downtown to do. They wanted to get their picture taken in front of the mural. So it became a destination instead of a problem. This was a great example of partnering with the arts community. This example is also really interesting. This is the Columbia County Chamber. Now in their market, what they realized was that sometimes the leaders of our religious institutions, pastors, rabbis, they have a little bit more insight into some of the challenges that our communities are facing. This can especially be true for under, some of our underserved populations. So they created a podcast where they combined the business community and the faith-based community, and they talked about the challenges they faced and brainstormed on ways to work through it. Just a great way to bring two groups together that may not always interact. This is another great partnership opportunity. It's from the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce. They partnered with countless other organizations to create something called Source Diverse, Source Local. And this gives lots of resources to small businesses to help them be better prepared to become part of the corporate supply chain locally. This is another interesting partnership example. So the Raleigh Chamber partnered with local Raleigh government and the NAACP, and it's for something called a better wake. They're looking to dismantle systemic racism. So they're looking at the biggest challenges that they face and working together to try to come up with solutions. Many of our communities are facing a workforce shortage, and I really love the creativity of this partnership. As you can see, there are many chambers involved, the Kansas State Chamber, the Greater Kansas City Chamber, and the Wichita Regional Chamber. They all came together with the Kansas Department of Corrections, and they put together a career campus on the grounds of a correctional facility. Now, what this campus is going to do is it's training incarcerated students to have the skills needed for some of the jobs available in their market. Again, a very creative way to address a challenge that they were facing. Now, those were the first two pillars. Mission is aligned with community impact, courageous leadership around that mission, and the third pillar is business model alignment. Now, one of the areas that we know is a huge resource is leveraging a 501c3 foundation to provide funding for your mission-based work. Now, if done intentionally, this can be incredibly effective. Now, from our benchmarking studies, you can see from 2012, only 44% of chambers of commerce had their own 501c3. But as of last year, 65% have their own 501c3 foundation. And that number is only going up. Another area that we've talked about when it comes to business model alignment is fee for service. This is a great example from the Eau Claire Area Chamber of Commerce. They have a concierge program. So if a new executive moves into their market, they're paired up with somebody from the chamber who can help them get more integrated into their community. Whether it's figuring out the right housing, if it's healthcare, childcare, pet services, they've got someone who can help them every step of the way. And they get more integrated into the community quickly and the chamber can make a profit doing that. Another good fee-for-service example, the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce. They have something called the Relocation and Red Carpet Services. They help their members with recruitment, onboarding of employees and employee retention. This is a skill set that they had on staff. They realized there was a need in the market and they can charge a fee for that work. In fact, the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce has been doing this for a long time. Their program, RBA Staffing, they offer staffing, background screenings, and tenant screenings for their community. I love this example for our Zoom world. This is the chamber for a Greater Chapel Hill Carborough. What they've done is if an organization wants to run a Zoom meeting, the chamber staff can manage that entire process from setup to managing the speakers, waiting rooms, Zoom bombers, the recording, you name it, they can take care of it. 
So if you think about your own community, if you have solopreneurs or really small businesses, this might be a service where you could offer some assistance in a place where it's really needed. So many chambers have decided to take our office space and turn it into co-working space. This is a great opportunity to bring your community together. But I really like the Moore County Chamber of Commerce example. They had sort of an unintended positive consequence. They used their co-working space to re-engage their local army base, and they leveraged it for training. But something interesting happened, because there were men and women who were transitioning out of the army and into the entrepreneurial world. Well, having been exposed to the chamber, they joined the chamber, were able to grow their businesses, network with other peers, and they ended up getting more involved in the business community because of this exposure. Now, a lot of chambers are also taking your conference room space and meeting space and outfitting it with the latest technology so that you can host hybrid meetings. And this is great for you, but you could also rent that space out to local organizations and businesses for a fee. You could actually recoup your costs and maybe even make a profit by, again, serving a need within the community. Now, I can't talk about business model alignment without talking about mergers and acquisitions. Over the past year and a half at ACCE, we've never had so much interest in mergers and acquisitions as we have recently. In fact, we just recently surveyed our members to ask, have you considered a merger or acquisition since January of 2020? 44% said yes, we've considered some sort of a partnership or a merger. So if you haven't already considered this, it might be something you want to look into. It's a great chance to really align your resources and collectively have more impact. So why am I predicting this chamber boom? You rose to the occasion. Even as many of you were at risk of closing your own doors or making really challenging decisions with staff and programming, you were still uplifting your communities. In the past six months, I've heard even more opportunity for chambers to get involved. We're getting called on even more frequently to be partners, to be thought leaders, and to be catalysts for change. Policymakers, media outlets, and other influencers are all calling on us for our council and for our leadership. So now is our time, but we've got to take advantage of this momentum that we've built up. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and we've got to make sure that it sticks. So how do we do that? we've got to share our stories. We're so accustomed to being storytellers for our businesses and for our communities, but we've got to be storytellers for ourselves. If we don't talk about our wins, nobody else will. Now at ACCE, it's our pledge to you that we're going to do everything we can to uplift your stories on platforms that are both national and global. But we need your help. First, we need to hear about your successes. Share with us what you're doing, let us know about some of your wins so that we can share it with a broader audience. But we also need you to share your stories with your constituents. Share it with your members, your board, the general public, with media and policymakers. We need to make sure that the chamber narrative is woven into the fabric of our communities. Now, this is our time, and I am so excited to chart this exciting path forward with you. So I hope that helps to set some of the stage for the Chamber Innovation Summit, and I hope you'll get the chance to engage with so many of your peers on this platform. We've actually increased the number of opportunities you have to do that. But I also hope you'll take the time to engage with our team. So this is my contact information, but you can also find our entire staff's information on our website. It's a complete honor for us to serve this community. We are so grateful for everything that you do. Thank you so much for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you soon.